Hi guys, Mehdi here. Uh, it's been a long time since I made my last video. Uh, I've made a, a video about the, the shop that I decorated and a uh, small tour through the shop. But uh, that's all since uh, my bushcraft breakfast in December. Uh, well, uh, as I told you before, uh, I wanted to do a series this year and the series is going to be around the 10 C's of survivability. It's not about the 10 C's of survivability because there are better experts. I'm, I'm not really an expert. So I, it's more a theme around the 10 C's and showing you uh, what, what the 10 C's mean to me and what I use uh, for the 10 C's. Uh, in case you don't know what the 10 C's are, yeah, it has been snowing and now it's a little bit melting. Uh, the 10 C's were introduced by David Canterbury and basically they are the, the 10 items uh, you can't easily make by yourself because you need the skills, you need the materials and you need the time. And in a survival situation, uh, most of those things you don't have. Uh, also the 10 C's are useful in bushcraft. It's at least the things you, you, you uh, take with you basically. And uh, well, the, the, the first five C's are, for example, a uh, cutting tool, combustion device to make fire, cordage, a uh, container to uh, take water with you, uh, and cargo to carry your things. Uh, for uh, David was uh, coverage, I take uh, coverage later on in the videos because you can play with the 10 C's, it's not fixed and it's not, uh, well, well it's depending also on the situation in, in which you are, uh, the, the weather circumstances like now uh, in, the, uh, in the snow, it's different uh, from the summer of course, so it depends on uh, several situations. Well, the first C is uh, a cutting tool, uh, which is basically a knife. And uh, I brought uh, most of my knives into the woods uh, to show to you. And I will tell you uh, which one I really use and which one I bought earlier, but well, I, I don't use uh, much anymore. And, and the reason why. And uh, well, just to give you an idea what what the 10 C's can mean for you, what it means for me and what it can mean for you. Uh, maybe you have other ideas, you have other knives, you have other items. Well, you can show that to me in, uh, in a video response uh, because I want to learn from you and uh, hopefully you can learn something uh, from me as well. Uh, at least you can share ideas. Okay, uh, I'll bring you to my knives. Okay guys, now I'm going to show you my knives and the first knife is a knife I've got uh, rather long. I bought it when uh, I was a scout leader and it's uh, a Dutch sailor's knife. It's, uh, it comes in a leather sheath and it's, it's rather strong, stitched on the back so you won't cut the stitches when you uh, put the knife in. It's a full tang knife with a wooden handle and uh, this one is stainless steel yeah yeah stainless steel and it's got a, a flat grind it's a very good knife to uh, cut ropes with it's uh, extremely sharp and it stays very sharp but I don't really use this in, in bushcraft and well I don't know why it's a pretty good knife but why well, I don't and uh, this second one that's my Victorinox it's a, a pocket knife and with a lock mechanism I always prefer uh, a locking mechanism because 
if there isn't and you're cutting something and I saw it happen and then the finger gets between the knife and the handle you can seriously cut your finger so it's better that it stays locked I don't know this knife if it's legal or illegal in England I know where uh, locking knives in general are illegal but uh, it depends on the mechanism well of course it also has a saw and I've used the saw many times to cut some wood for a small campfire and the regular <coughs> sorry I've been uh, ill still a little bit uh, coughing there's a screwdriver a bottle opener a small screwdriver and a can opener a corkscrew and what I find very handy because <coughs> as you saw uh, I'm wearing uh, glasses but also for sunglasses it's very tiny screwdriver and it's very good for uh, repairs of glasses a toothpick well there's everything on it that's my second knife I love to take this with me because it's very handy it goes into my pockets and I have always a knife with me so this is popular knife then another knife that I really like it's my Opinel uh, Opinel comes in different uh, sizes and if this is the 10 yeah I think this the 10 uh, <coughs> the Opinel it's uh, a design from 1890 it's designed by uh, well, what's his name Joseph Opinel and he lived in uh, Saint Jean de Maurienne in Savoie in France and uh, he made a, a working man or a peasant's knife and the design hasn't changed since then simply open the knife this is a carbon steel knife I love carbon steel because it's uh, very easy to sharpen and uh, also to uh, to make sparks with a, uh, a ferro rod. Well, from this knife uh, at the Second World War, there were about 20 million sold, so that's pretty much, uh, especially for that time. In 1955, they made a, a twist lock on the. It is called a Viro block, twist lock on the knife, so you can't close it and cut your fingers. In uh, 2000, so 13 years ago, uh, Marcel Opinel he invented a lock and you put the knife back because uh, I remember the old knives in your pocket they could open and you could hurt your fingers so on the twist lock he made this so you can close it I think it's very handy it's a good knife it's used by many people who love camping and the outdoors uh, sailors, fishermen, uh, craftsmen and I even read that uh, Pablo Picasso, the famous ar uh, artist, painter and uh, sculptor that he used the Opinel to make wooden sculptures so I think that says something about the quality of this knife also a good knife to take with you, to have in your backpack This guys, there it goes, it's a knife I've got very very long, uh, it's made in Spain, it's stainless steel, it's uh, more or less a hunting knife, it comes in a plastic sheath, I 
all the way around. As you can see, it drops out very easily. This knife is now illegal in Holland because it, it's got two cutting edges, one knife edge and one saw edge, and that's not allowed. Uh, I think I bought a knife because it looks like a military knife, more or less a Rambo style. And uh, I'm from the period of the, the Rambo movies, so, and even the, the Vietnam War, when I was still a kid, of course. But yeah, I think that influenced me. I won't throw it away <laughs> because it's a souvenir of uh, my younger years. Okay, this knife, it's a hunter's knife. It comes in a heavy duty leather sheath. You can hang it on your belt. It's from uh, Mule, it's uh, a famous brand in, uh, in Spain. I think it's a rather big knife, it's stainless steel. It's supposed to be full tang, but all wrapped around with uh, rubber. It has a very good grip. But again, I think it's too much uh, Rambo style. And I don't have to, uh, to kill deers here in, in Holland, so I won't use it for bushcrafts. Maybe I'll take it with me when I go further up to the north. But uh, don't take this knife with me in Holland. Then I go to the bushcraft knives. This is a Hulterforce and Hulterforce has got very good and very cheap knives and uh, other cutting tools, uh, also for carpenters, uh, electricians, etc. The, the sheath is plastic and the loop you can open and as you can see you can hang it on a, a button on your uh, trousers or cut this part away and put it around your belt. I don't really like this system because a few times and it will break I guess. It doesn't look very solid. The knife itself, it's, uh, well, this one is carbon steel. It's not full tang. I think it goes till here, halfway. It's a, a very good bushcraft knife to begin with. It's got a secondary bevel. It's a grind. Well, for the beginners, it means this is straight, then it goes up like this, and then the, the real cutting edge. So it's this, this, this. It's uh, more difficult to sharpen, I think. But at the other hand, this knife is so cheap that if you damage it, you just buy a new one. It's no problem. It's a good knife and if someone wants to borrow a knife from me I'll give him this knife because if something goes wrong it's no problem and still a good knife very solid you can baton uh, wood with it without any problem and extremely sharp my next one and that's my favorite yeah, it's my favorite knife, I can say. It's my Mora Clipper. Also comes in a plastic sheath. You can hang this on your pants or on your belt. Just clips on. That's why the, the name uh, uh, Mora Clipper comes from. As you can see, I've used it many times. I've sharpened it also many times. It's extremely sharp 
the it's not full tank again uh, and I saw recent pictures from the factory and it what gets till till here it's just a little bit more than halfway so it's very strong and very solid it's a rather thin uh, knife but uh, you can uh, cut wood with it very easily it's got a scandy grind and that means that it's for the beginners the knife goes like this and then to the to the edge as you can see here okay it's easy to sharp just put it on your whetstone like this tilt it and then you can uh, sharpen it it's a bit greasy that's the disadvantage of uh, the, the carbon steel knives they rust very easily you always have to put some oil or grease or something on it it won't fall out and I've put a rubber band with a, a fire steel on it this knife always comes with me uh, when I go out in the woods for bushcraft now we're talking about Mora this is the Mora classic and it comes very sharp out of the factory in fact this is one of the first models of Mora and it's a perfect knife if you want to do uh, some wood carving uh, it's you can compare it it's about the same size but the handle is different and it allows you, allows you to hold the, the knife more like uh, like this and uh, it's a very good knife also for bushcraft but especially for cutting wood and then my latest knife it's a condor and uh, the history of condor goes back to 1787 in Germany in Solingen and you should probably know the uh, in Solingen, in Germany, they make very good steel. They make scissors, knives, anything. And it's uh, the best steel in Europe, at least. That's what I learned at school. Uh, the factory moved to uh, El Salvador in the 60s. And uh, from two, 2004, they, uh, they made the first line of uh, tools and knives for Europe and North America and uh, they called that that plant the or that factory the condor knives and tools this the condor bush law it comes in a very nice leather sheath and there's a piece of leather in between so you won't cut the the stitches okay <clears throat> it's a full tang knife as you can see here that means that it's extra strong it's carbon steel and it's got a, a scandy grind and normally <clears throat> normally there's a, a gray coating on it I don't like the coating and I heard that uh, it's it, uh, well it's not a good protection against rust because water can uh, go under it and start rusting under the coating it's not what I want so I took some sandpaper and uh, I, I took the coating off and also I like the, the color better I put some wax on it to pretend uh, to prevent what am I talking I put some uh, uh, <clears throat> I put some bee wax on my knife to prevent it from rusting 
it's a it's a drain passing by. <clears throat> the knife is much thicker. The blade is much thicker than the the Mora. Uh, it's it's heavier. The hard wooden handle is very nice to hold. Right. There's some snow on the camera. And uh, I've cut some wood with it. It works easier than the Mora. I think the Mora is good for the finer work. This more for the, the heavy stuff. So, conclusion. What are my favorite knives? It's the Condor Bushlaw and it's the Mora in, and this is the, the clipper but also the, the bushcraft knife etc. They're good to take with you. These are my best knives. Second, my Opinel goes into my backpack and my Victorinox goes into my pants. So I've got four knives with me most of the time. This I can hang on my neck or on my belt. These are my knives and this is my way of uh, implementing the, the, the first of the 10 C's. Okay guys, well you've seen my knives, you've seen what's my cutting tool the first of the the 10 C's uh, okay one thing maybe you have noticed I'm uh, I made more mistakes and I had to think more than in my other videos at least that's how I feel it I'll see it back later on my computer and the reason is because I'm a little bit dizzy and not feeling so well and that's got a special reason because and that's what I want to announce today I stopped smoking I smoke for too long and too much and it's very difficult to stop it's not my first time but today, I want to stop for the rest of my life. And I sincerely hope that I will never touch one cigarette again. And, uh, well, that explains why uh, I've got more difficulties to, to, to think. I'm uh, a bit shivering. But that's <laughs> the cold turkey. Okay, so guys, if you don't smoke, never start smoking because it's so difficult to get rid of it and if you do smoke please follow my example and also stop next um, let's wait for the train that's the train back to Amsterdam Well, if you look on my channel, I think it must be on that side. You see a few links to my blog, to my Facebook, and also to my uh, link page. All the links I had about uh, bushcraft, outdoor survival, uh, all the shops in <coughs> shops in England, Holland, Belgium, uh, Denmark, uh, United States, uh, mostly web shops. Uh, I've collected on my computer and now I published it so if you're looking for something go to my page and you'll find links of several shops maybe also in your country or uh, they sell uh, internationally right well I hope to see you next time my next video about or around the 10 C's